Hello everyone, this is Bowman. Welcome back to episode 7 of this Let's Play The Calamity Mod Season 2. A lot of you guys complained about the lack of progress in the last one, which I totally understand. But I'm also not sorry at all that we spent most of the time in the Sunken Sea. Uh, I think it definitely deserved a lot of screen time, since it is a fantastic biome. But I hear you guys. You want progress? Let's make some goddamn progress then! So first order of business today is to fight Skeletron and to get all of the goodies out of the dungeon. First and foremost, we need that shadow key to open some chests in the abyss. Since it's still daytime, let's head over to the sulfurous sea for a little bit. Wait a minute, is this a new background? I'm not sure. But regardless, it looks awesome. <laughs> what? We still can't break this block? Which we got in like episode 1 or 2? Why? What is so special about this block that I can't break it? And what is up with the water here? This is really weird. Oh, we got a friend incoming. Oh god, what? No, 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 no. Let me go, let me go, let me go. We are off to a great start. Also, I almost forgot that we are playing in Revengeance mode. Why do I bring this up? Um, because we are about to fight Skeletron and I already have a hard time killing him in expert mode. So this will be interesting to say the least. Alright old man, let's go. Oh god, he is almost as fast as me. Is this his revenge mode thing? I'm not sure but it feels like he goes faster when he's spinning compared to expert mode. No, 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 bad move! Oh god, that was so... <gasps> no, please, I'm not ready to die. Oh god, how did I dodge that? I mean, did you see those epic dodges? Yeah, that's me, doing epic dodges all the time. It was definitely not pure luck or anything like that. No, pure skill. <laughs> all right, the fight is under control again. It's really not that hard, bound. Just keep going around that bony boy and you'll be fine. Oh hell yeah! I even got my adrenaline ready! Wow, I'm surprising myself. Good job me. Oh, what am I doing? Oh god, no! What is happening? I had this! I had everything under control! It's all falling apart! Please, just die! Oh my god. I am proud and also ashamed of myself. <laughs> I did really well most of the fight, but somehow I keep getting myself into those very stupid situations and usually they get me killed, but it seems like I got lucky this time around. Can't complain about that. What in the world is this? Well clearly it's ammo for something. Grenade shells, 200 damage. Alright. Skeletron lore time. The curse is said to only affect the elderly. After they are afflicted, they become an immortal vessel for an ancient demon of the underworld. Uh, sounds bad at first, but if you think about it, you become immortal. And you have cool demon powers hidden within you. <laughs> I would take that. Anyway, let's raid the dungeon now. Since there is most likely not a whole lot of calamity action going on in the pre-hard mode dungeon, I will just show all the loots I get. First golden chest and... Muramasa. I take it. Second golden chest. Cobalt shield. Nice. Kind of. I'm not sure. Like, I'm not sure if I'm actually going to equip it. There was a time where I thought immunity to knockback is a must have. And I mean later on you combine it with lots of other accessories anyway. And you get that knockback immunity eventually. Almost naturally. Ooh, ancient shift. Um, that's like the short sword version of the Muramasa, right? Yeah, that's pretty cool. But yeah, anyway, I used to always equip the quote unquote naked cobalt shield right away. But now I think there are better accessories to equip. Until you combine it with other stuff, of course. I don't know why I felt the need to talk about the cobalt shield, but maybe it helped someone. Next golden chest. Blue moon. 40 damage. <laughs> well, I know the calamity mod boosts the attack of flails, which I think is a good idea, by the way. Flails don't get enough love in my opinion, but now that they have more attack, maybe more people consider using them. And Aqua Scepter. Alright, it's a material for something. Um, we will check it out once we get back to base. 
Magic Missile, also a material for something, which again, we will have a look at once we get back. Another chest, another new item at least. This time we got Valor. Chest number something, I don't know, I don't care. Handgun. Um, I'm slowly but surely getting impatient now. Give me a shadow key already, god damn it. Ah, another blue moon. Come on game, you have to give me a shadow key eventually. Next golden chest. Another Murasama. Can you believe this big mama? I'm about to cause some drama. Let me just call Obama. <laughs> I don't know. Another one. And another Cobalt Shield. Great. We probably got every single dungeon item by now. Well, except for the Shadow Key. The only thing I want. The only thing I need. Here we go. Two more chests. Four more chests. This gotta be it now. First one. Oh, well, thank you. What's in here though? Magic Missile. Alright, well, after like 10 chests, we finally got the Shadow Key. And now I somehow have to also fit it into my totally clocked up inventory. And there we go, Shadow Key acquired. Our job here is done. So let's get the hell out of here. Alright, since some of the weapons from the dungeon were materials, let's check them out really quick. The Aqua Scepter is part of the Ultra Liquidator. And I just noticed that the recipe browser added a little thing where it says which mod a recipe is from. And I like that a lot. That's a great addition to the recipe browser. Anyway, the Ultra Liquidator is post Moonlord business. So not that interesting for now. What can we make with the magic missile? Carnage Ray. That might be something we could make right now. Oh, nope, never mind. It's post, uh, post Slime God, so we would have to take on that dude first. Too bad. And to make the Night's Ray, we would also have to kill the Slime God first. It's a new day and new recording for me. I've been checking out the comments of the last episode and quite a few people want me to craft the Sea Foam Bomb. A weapon you can make from stuff you find in the Sunken Sea. 18 rogue damage, very fast speed. Throws a bomb that explodes into a bubble, which deals extra damage to enemies. So apparently this weapon is supposed to be really good. Some even said overpowered. Well, let's fight some shrooms and have a look for ourselves. Oh my god, wait, what? Why are we falling so fast? Do the falling speeds of the slime mount and the air light armor stack? Well, it seems like it. Oh my god, it hurts my eyes and my brain falling this fast. But anyway, good to know. So I don't think that this stacking effect is intended, but I like it a lot. All right, here we go. Shroom Boy has been summoned. Now let's see how well the sea foam bomb does. Um, it's definitely very good, but I don't think it's overpowered as some people have claimed. But you have to consider that we don't have any rope gear equipped. But yeah, regardless, really cool weapon. Shroom Boy is giving me a hard time. This is almost embarrassing. Come on, baby. Yes, no! <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> that double KO though. Jesus. Did Room Boy get a buff since the first time we fought him? I hope so. Because I need an excuse for what just happened. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. Let's get our Victite armor out of this beautiful barrel over here. Because we need stuff for underwater. Most importantly, slightly reduced breath loss in the abyss. Yep. It's about time you guys, we are finally going to properly check out the abyss. And we are also going to use the ocean crest. Most ocean enemies become friendly and provides water breeding. The thing is, this one will probably not work in the abyss. But we will try it out anyway. Alright, I think I got my equipment all set up now. So let's head over to where all the fun is going to happen. And we are here. Who is this little guy? I don't remember seeing this one before. Aquatic Parasite. Alright. What the? Did you just yeet through the blocks? Are you a wizard? Stop being a wizard! God, I hate these guys. So, I have heard some monsters in the abyss are actually passive. Uh, I don't know about that. We will see. But this Aquatic Parasite seems to be pretty chill. Which makes me feel uneasy, so we will just get rid of this guy. Also, these guys seem to be passive. 
but I guess they are technically sulfurous sea monsters and not abyss dudes. Anyway, I'm clearly stalling. I'm scared of going down there again, okay? And I'm not just saying that. The abyss actually freaks me out. It's dark, you can't breathe, there's blood moons happening, death lurks in the dark, I already want to turn around. Whatever, let's just hunt down some chests as fast as we can. Uh, we will take a look at what we actually get later at the base, since we are kind of in a hurry down here with our breathometer. What is this? There's nothing in here. Why does this exist? Can you tell I'm stressed? Here we go, another chest. And it's the one where we died the first time we ever got down here. So it feels really good that we have finally looted this chest. This looks weird and kind of not how it's supposed to be. Huh. Well, this is convenient. I doubt that it was intended that you can get out of the abyss like that. Or maybe it is, I don't know. But let's continue our exploration. I feel so uncomfortable being here. This constant feel of, you have to hurry otherwise you will drown. And all the monsters that you can barely see, the darkness, all of this. It's stressful, okay? But of course in a very good way. It just means that this biome works really well. We found another chest, which again, I will just loot quickly. Man, there is so much stuff in the pots down here, it's crazy. I already have a full inventory. Well, my inventory is half full all the time anyway. <laughs> oh god, what in the world is this? The worm mod is back at it again. I do like the slow movement of this thing though. Slow and tanky. That's a nice change of pace actually since most other monsters in here move really fast. Oh my god, what the fuck? Uh, no, I want none of that. And I'm also about to drown now. I don't wanna be here anymore. Okay, let's get the giant squid and then we are getting the hell out of here. Come on, die already. There we go. Did you drop anything cool? Nope. Well, whatever, we are pacing. <sighs> It's so nice not being down there anymore. It might sound like that I don't like the abyss, but quite the opposite is the case. It's incredible, because it made me feel uncomfortable and stressed and paranoid. That place has the intention of doing that, and it has done that very well. Alright, so we got two items out of the chests, one of which is the torrential tear. Summons the rain. Rain will start sometime after this item is used. If used when raining, the rain will stop sometime after this item is used. Nice. And I remember this item from season 1. I think back then it dropped from the Desert Scourge, right? The other item is the Strange Orb. Summons a young siren light pad. Hell yeah, a light pad! Provides a large amount of light while underwater. Uh, so it doesn't provide any light outside of water. Oh man. But... It might prove to be very useful for further abyss explorations. Also, I can tell that our little siren friend here is in its teen years. You can clearly see that by looking at that emo haircut. Just by looking at this fellow, I can hear MCR playing in the background. Came a time when every star fall brought you to tears again. That's scary. Then we also got Sunken Stew. Causes potion sickness for 50 seconds? 37 seconds with Philosopher's Stone effect. Instead of 60. Restores 120 life and 150 mana. Increases life regeneration 60 minute duration? What? I don't get it. Is it a health potion now or a buff potion? Can it be both? Ah! It hurts my brain! Uh, I guess it doesn't really matter. I'll just put it into one of my chests regardless, since I'm a hoarder. <laughs> but it is a material for something. Oh, that's just Louis AFK's unlimited well-fed thingy. And we don't want that. And we got another item from the Abyss. The Herring Staff, a summoner weapon. Ah, oh, look at this fella! He looks awesome! Man, it's fascinating to me how people are able to make these awesome looking sprites with only like 30 pixels to work with. I really appreciate this cool summoner weapon, but you know, you just can't replace slimy like that. Before we jump back into the seemingly endless depths of the abyss, let's slow down for a bit and get some building done. Welcome to YouTube's favorite intermission thingy. Yeah. 
So I have to apologize in advance, I messed up while recording this building montage, since I forgot to hit the record button again at some point, but whatever I guess. So the plan is to build a home for the recently added NPC Amedeus. And since he is the Sea King and a Mer... Man? Is that the correct term? Sure. Um, we want to make an underwater house for him, right? So at first I had to test if you can even make a submerged valid NPC house. And the answer is... Yes, you can. Which was kind of surprising to me. But I sure am not questioning it. I take it. So next we have to create an artificial sunken sea biome. And I thought, let's make it right there, where you would also find it in the new world, right below the desert. It's definitely not a convenient location, I'm aware of it, but if I wanted to make NPC houses to be convenient and efficient, I would be building box houses anyway. But I think we will hook up this place with a teleporter once we have access to them. Another thing that I have to address is, we can't get Amedeus 100% legit into this world. The only reason why I'm able to build this artificial biome is because we got the blocks from another, more recently created world. So once we are done building here, we can get a giant clan to spawn and kill it and then free Amedeus. And that's the least amount of cheating I could think of to get Amedeus into our world. But yeah, anyway, this is where I have to cut the faux bit montage because I thought I would just stop recording myself, filling this in with water. I mean, it can't get any more boring than that and I would also save some storage. But yeah, again, I forgot to hit the record button again and that's just where we are now. But I think that's not that big of a deal because this didn't turn out as cool as I had in mind. But it will do. Now comes the important part though. We have to get a giant clam to spawn. Uh, this will be interesting. Interestingly enough, the way that Calamity Mod recognizes you being in the sunken sea biome is by you being in front of sunken sea walls. With other biomes, it's the amount of certain blocks on the screen or close to the player. So I'm not quite sure why they decided to do this differently for the sunken sea biome, but it doesn't really matter I guess. I just thought it was interesting to point out. Also, I'm not sure if it is necessary for me to stand in water to get sunken sea monsters to spawn, but well, I'm doing it anyway, just to make sure. Alright, so we definitely get sunken sea monsters to spawn, which is a great sign. So hopefully it doesn't take too much longer until we get Big Mama to spawn in here. Okay, I went back to base really quick so that we have two water candles to hopefully speed up this process. Oh, there we go. Big Mama has finally shown up. Ah, oh, I see. We are playing hide and seek again. Alright, let's do this. There you are. You didn't even try to hide from me this time. That's kind of disappointing of you. Welcome back, Amedeus. A nice peasant house for the Sea King Amedeus. You're welcome, Amedeus. Next, we will do the thing which you guys have probably expected me to do right after our dungeon raid. But of course, I'm missing feathers. Again. <laughs> this seems to be a common theme in this playthrough. Okay, my bird watch has finally ended. So now we are able to craft the skyline wings. Pre hard mode wings? Yeah, they are pretty cool, what can I say. You need area light bars, feathers, fallen stars and bones to make them. Which makes these wings a post skeleton accessory. Ah, oh, dude, the animation on these look amazing. And I have to say that's a lot of fly time. I mean, I know our boots boost our fly time, but still, that's impressive for pre mode wings. Pretty impressive at the stage where you are usually not even supposed to have wings. <laughs> And it can be used to make the Seraph Tracers, which we are far, far away from making. Alright, time to get back to Giant Squid Town. Let's see what else we can find down there. And I also want to make it to the next layer, just so that we've seen it. Maybe I don't even want to see it. First, of course, since I'm a scared baby, I have to stall and procrastinate with some fishing. Um, we might get that one accessory which gives us underwater breeding in the abyss. I'm done fishing and we got nothing. 
Except for a Riva Shark, which is nice, I guess. But not really what I was looking for. Okay, here we go again. The pots down here are just nuts. Usually, I don't really pay attention to making sure to break pots. But down here, it's definitely worth it to do so. Alright, we made it a little bit further. And we got another chest to loot. Oh, hello, a magic weapon. Can't wait to have a look at it. Not gonna lie... I already forgot where that little hole in the wall was. So, I'm probably going to drown. Or, well, I will have to teleport back. Oh hey, it's Giant Squid Boy again! Ouch, oh god! Giant Squid Boy wants us dead! Yeah, that was not very really clever of me. At least we can now check out the Black Anurian. Sure. 45 magic damage, very fast speed, uses 8 mana and no additional info. Okay. Reminds me a lot of the toxic carp weapon, which I personally like quite a bit. Alright, let's go for one more abyss run. This time I'll try to push forward as hard as I can. I really want to get a glimpse of the next layer of this nightmare which we call the abyss. Wait, what? This weapon seriously got homing projectiles? Uh, sure, why not? This seems pretty OP, don't you think? Well, we will see in upcoming boss fights, I guess. I'm also going to use the Anechoic Coating Potion this run. I really hope it does what it says. Yeah, I think the potion is doing its thing. But I'm not entirely sure how effective it actually is. Oh god, it's Giant Squid Boy again! Why you do me like this game? Okay, one more run! Oh yay! Party time is over indeed! The Blood Moon is rising! Just what you want to see in a place like this! How exactly am I supposed to get to this chest? I can't break any blocks down here! Oh, I can! It just takes years to actually break one! That's fair enough, I guess. If that means I can get to this chest, I'm willing to spend some years mining these blocks! Iron Boots allows you to fall faster while in liquids. Interesting, and it's also a material. Good, because that effect alone is not really worth it. Okay, cool, we have definitely made it further now. But we are still in the same layer, since there are still shadow chests around. And another one, nice. And of course our inventory is full already. Which is not so nice, because I really want this weapon. We are almost out of breath, so we gotta yeet now. No squid boys, I ain't got no time for you guys, I gotta go. Yes, I saw that chest, but we gotta go deeper. Oh, the music has changed. Yay, we've hit the next layer of the abyss. Wait a minute, there are still shadow chests. Uh, does that mean we are totally supposed to be able to explore this already? Huh. From this run we got the depth charm. Reduces the damage caused by the pressure of the abyss while out of breath. Uh, what? Removes the bleed effect caused by the abyss. Um, I guess those are effects which occur in deeper layers of the abyss. I don't know. And we also got the ball O for goo. Sure, that's definitely a word. 42 meter damage and very fast speed. Uh, okay. Seems to be a pretty average flail. Oh, it also got homing projectiles. Well, damn. The abyss weapons seem to kick ass. And I like it. Now we are going to do something which we should have done a long time ago. Setting up a magic storage. Storage. Storage hard. Storage crafting interface. And storage unit. Does this look good enough? Eh, not really. But it will do. Let's also put the demonite upgrade on it. Sweet. Ah, look at that 80 item storage space. Let me tell you, that's crazy. Alright? Not really. But anyway, that's going to do it for this episode. Next time, it's Slime God time. Very excited. Also, really quick, thank you guys for your input. I've asked you guys for building suggestions in a community post. And there were a lot of cool ideas in there. Some of which we will definitely get to. For now, we need more NPCs though. So what NPC house should we build next? But anyways, Amidias and my humble self Hope that you have enjoyed watching me derping around. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a sweet day and stay awesome. What's the worst that I could say? <laughs>
Things are better if I stay so long and good night. So long and good night. Where if you care, 